okay so in this uh, video this is going to be a short video where i will give you um, the summary okay of everything we have learned uh, in this chapter okay so we have uh, this is uh, okay in this chapter we have uh, studied linear maps okay and uh, i'm just going to give you the summary of the key concepts we have uh, studied okay so we have started this um, this chapter with uh, isomorphisms isomorphisms okay and he said that uh, uh, a map is um, an isomorphism if uh, it's uh, it is a correspondence okay so if it is a correspondence correspondence and uh, preserves structure preserves okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> i like to be organized i'm sure you have noticed that um, so a map is an isomorphism if it uh, preserves structure just dot dot here if it is correspondence let's say correspondence first correspondence, and if it preserves structure preserves preserves structure and i'm sure you have uh, you remember how we show that it is a, a correspondence if it is a one to one and on two preserves structure means if it preserves uh, vectors addition and uh, scalar multiplication okay then we move on to an automorphism and we say that it's an isomorphism uh, of a map with itself so if the domain uh, space and the codomain space space are both the same okay so automorphism then we move on to automorphism okay then we have seen a, a very important theorem that says that dimension characterizes uh, isomorphism okay so because uh, it, it to show that or to see whether uh, two um, spaces are isomorphic to each other what we have to do is to get their dimensions and to compare them so if they have any two spaces that have uh, same dimensions are isomorphic okay so we have said that dimension dimension characterizes characterizes uh, isomorphism isomorphism okay then we move on to uh homomorphisms and here we say we drop the correspondence and uh, we just keep the preserved structure homomorphism okay it's a map that preserves only the structure preserves structure okay then we have seen a transformation uh, a homomorphism or a linear map linear map and as you can see um, uh, 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 an isomorphism is a special case of uh, homomorphism okay and that's why even the title of our chapter is linear map that means we have studied homomorphisms knowing that isomorphism is a specialization a special case of homomorphism then we move on to a transformation transformation basically it's like uh, the automorphism for the homomorphism basically is a is a, a map a linear map uh, of a space with itself okay uh, number so if the domain and the codomain spaces are the same that's what it is then we have seen the range space range space and we have said that is all the hv or, or um, such that uh, you know uh, they are all the images of the of the of the domain space so basically and uh, we have seen that the dimension of the range space is the rank so we have seen the rank and also we went to study the null space 
So the null space is um, all the elements in the domain space that map uh, to the trivial element in the codomain space. So that map to zero, whatever that zero is in the codomain space. Okay. And uh, so we have said that the dimension of the null space is the maps nullity. Okay. Then we move on to how to represent how to represent a map with a matrix, okay? How to represent linear maps with matrices. Matrices. And move on to how to do um, matrix uh, vector product. Because if we are given a vector, and uh, we already know the map the matrix representation of the map and we want to see the image of that vector uh, on the action of that map we multiply the matrix representing that map with the vector so that's why we have done matrix vector multiplication okay so, so basically it's the dot product between the rows of the matrix and the column of the vector Okay, so number, let me continue here. I, I hope I will have enough space. Uh, after uh, matrix, we have said that um, any matrix represents a linear map. Any matrix represents a linear map. Or basically how to find facts about, uh, about, uh, about, uh, about, about a map okay through its matrix so any matrix we will be given is the representation of uh, of a map so we can find the the dimension of the domain the dimension of the codomain we can find the range space the maps rank the null space the uh, the nullity okay and we can also check uh, through the the matrix if the map is uh, one to one is or if it is on to or both or middle okay so then we move on to um, the mechanics uh, matrix operations matrix operations where we have uh, we have seen how to add two matrices together and uh, doing the scalar product uh, so those are entry by entry operations but uh, we have seen that uh, when we do matrix multiplication we have also done matrix multiplications this time is not entry by entry multiplications is the rows or uh, the dot product between the rows of um, of uh, of uh, one matrix in the columns of the sec the other matrix okay and uh, what else have we said there? We have said that matrix multiplication is actually map composition, is the representation of uh, the map composition. So on the underlying map, uh, in, when it comes to matrix multiplication, is uh, the composition of uh, two maps or more. Okay. And uh, so we move on and uh, we have done um, mechanics. Make a mix of uh, matrix multiplication of matrix multiplication multiplication and here as well we have uh, discussed a few concepts we have discussed the IJ unit matrix we have discussed the identity matrix uh, the rescale matrix uh, the permutation matrix and we have seen what happens if you multiply uh, uh, a matrix with uh, an elementary matrix from the left what happens okay uh, with the uh, uh, with the, the, that multiplication and what happened if we multiply from the uh, from the right so we have seen what happens if we multiply from the left it acts on the rows from the right it acts on the columns and then we have finished that section with um, elementary uh, reduction matrices those are some beautiful matrices we have seen that we can use to perform gauss jargon operations and uh, even reduce the matrix to the block partial identity okay so then we have seen oh uh, we have seen the inverses we have seen how to find the inverse of a matrix what do we do we just write the we just 
perform uh, gas jargon um, eliminations on the um, on the augmented metrics. So on the left hand side in the augmented metrics, we have our main metrics, and uh, on the on the right hand side we have uh, the identity metrics. So the left hand side the main metrics, and the right hand side the identity metrics, and we perform Gauss Jordan metrics uh, uh, operations on that uh, augmented metrics. Then at the end we are left with the an uh, identity metrics. Um, um, a block partial identity metrics on the left and uh, uh, metrics on the right. So whatever metrics we have uh, on the right is um, is the inverse. Okay, that's basically the easiest way to find the inverse of uh, of metrics. Okay. Then we have seen uh, we move on to and. Also, we have seen a very important theorem here is a, a matrix is invertible if and only if it is non-singular. But so that means if we have a if and only if it's a square and um, after Gauss method, there is no zero rule. Okay, that's what we have seen. So a matrix is invertible if and only if it's a non-singular and what is on the line map uh, behind the, the non-singular matrix is and is an isomorphism, okay? So a matrix is uh, invertible if and only if it represents an isomorphism. Isn't that beautiful, how things uh, uh, are connecting together, okay? So then we move on to how to change uh, uh, the representation of a vector by using the change of metrics, okay? Of uh, basic metrics. So we have seen change of basis metrics so basically let's say you have given a map and uh, in a in a in a space okay and you have represented uh, that um, vector with the respect so you will be given a, a basis of course but so you you are asked to represent the vector in that first basis but let's say this time you are given another basis and you are asked to represent that um, that same vector in with respect to a new basis as you can see the the vector is still the same but the representation is going to be different because we are dealing with a different basis so we have seen that uh, during the representation um, of the identity map with respect to the old basis and the new basis is the change of basis matrix okay and uh, that led us to okay see how to change uh, the representation of a map. Representation, presentation, presentation. So, with respect to different pair uh, or pairs of uh, of bases. So, if you are given a, a pair of bases to begin with, you represent that map. Let's say it's H with a, a big uh, with a matrix big H, and now you are given a different pair of bases and you are asked to represent that map. The map is not changing, but the matrix representing that map is going to change, okay? And that led us to uh, the concept of uh, matrix equivalent. Matrix equivalent. So if whatever we have done here, we, okay, we have found H, Okay, representing the, the map with respect to the first pair of bases. If we are asked to represent that same map with respect to a different pair of bases, let's call that uh, uh, representation, that matrix H, then we should have um, P and Q. Okay, we, we say that H hat and H are matrix equivalent because they do represent the same map. Even though they will be the same, they represent the same underlying map. And there should be non-singular P and Q such that H should be P, H, Q. And I have showed you uh, that very important diagram, okay? That helps us to find uh, P and Q. And uh, we moved on with uh, projections. We have seen orthogonal, orthogonal projection. into a line 17 and we finish the chapter with uh, the Gramsci
tour. Schmidt uh, orthogonalization theory. Orthogonalization theory. So basically, if we are given a basis, the basis, the vectors in that basis are not obliged to be orthogonal. Okay, so but thanks to Graham Schmidt's uh, orthogonalization theorem, we can turn the normal basis into an orthogonal, orthogonal basis. And uh, most of the time in those types of questions, the next step is uh, to turn that orthogonal basis into an orthonormal. Orthonormal, that means we have to normalize uh, uh, to normalize the vectors in that orthogonal basis. Normalize means divide each vector by its length. Okay, so that um, the the unit of the new uh, of uh, of the length of the new vector is going to be equal to one. Okay, and we have done um, uh, in all of these concepts. We have done the lecture and then the tutorial. So I have done the theory, the theorems, definitions. Lemmas, corollaries, then I gave you some examples to illustrate those concepts with you. So I'm going to stop here. Thank you and see you in the next chapter. Okay, thanks.